Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming pattern for the next couple of weeks, and then also, we're going to take a look into the springtime, the early springtime on our long-range models. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting store in the description and in the pinned comment down below, and then also our very awesome Patreon page in the same location. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think this upcoming February is going to go? I know it's a long range look there, but also this video is a long range look, so it kind of makes sense. So let me know how you think February is going to go in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at actually last night. This is kind of just the current pattern we're in, and as you can see, cold in the southeast, cold in the south central, warm elsewhere, so warm in the west, warm in the north central, warm in the northeast, warm in the Great Lakes, generally warm everywhere except for the southeastern corner of the United States. As we reach about 7 a.m. on Saturday, January 16th, you can see it's a lot of the same. It's actually a little more potent there, that pattern is a little more dominant. We see very cold in the Gulf states in the southeast, and then very warm up in the mid-Atlantic, the northeast, the north central, the northwest, the southwest, everywhere except for the southeast once more. Now what we're going to do in just a moment is we're going to move on and take a look at our CFS daily model. We're going to move on to that CFS monthly model eventually. Uh, we're also going to take a look at the European seasonal model, and then we're going to take a look at those teleconnections. So all sorts of medium and long range outlooks coming up in just a moment. All right, so here we are taking a look at some five day increments here on our CFS daily model. And this is the 10th through the 15th. So this is the kind of next five days. As you can see, cold in the southeast, a little bit of cold in the south central and even the southwest, but definitely warm in the north. So this is kind of like what's weird is this is kind of like an El Nino pattern. And we're in a La Nina, obviously, but we've been in this pattern for quite a while now. I think at least the entirety of the month of January. Very interesting pattern. And look, once we move on towards the 15th through the 20th, a lot of the same. It looks to just continue on. Cold in the southeast, warm in the north central, warm in the west, warm in the northeast. Again, just a total classic El Nino pattern, kind of like a moderate El Nino pattern. Uh, and I think this is going to allow for the continued chances of southern sliders. That prediction, obviously, in my January forecast has worked out tremendously, as we've already seen two systems that were pretty similar to a southern slider track. And I do expect that those will be possible moving forward as well. Very, very interesting pattern we find ourselves in. Pretty much the opposite of what it should be. Very interesting. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to move on and take a look at the 20th through the 25th, the 25th through the 30th, the 30th through the 4th. Uh, and then the 4th through the 9th, and then even the 10th through the 15th, the 15th through the 20th, that's of February, of course, and then the 19th through the 24th, which will be the end of that model run. And then we're going to start taking, up one, taking a look at one month increments there on that model, and then also our European seasonal model as well later on. All right, so once we reach the 20th through the 25th, things begin to change a little bit. According to this model... Again, I want to reiterate the fact, according to this model, not according to me, not according to any other models, but the CFS daily model, at least, thinks we're going to have colder conditions for the entirety of the east. That does include the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, and the Southeast still. Uh, but this really just spreads around to the entirety of the east in this pattern. Also notice we have some warmer air there for portions of the four corner states, and then northward from there uh, for portions of the Pacific Northwest, portions of the Northern Rockies, and then even the upper Midwest there as well. So we find ourselves in, again, just another interesting pattern uh, where it's very similar, but this does extend up the coast. That's the only difference by this point. All right, 20th through the 30th. And what this model begins to do is it begins to just show cold everywhere. Do I think this will be the case? I don't really think so because this is a very rare pattern to see cold everywhere. A uh, very unusual. Usually you see it either in the east, the central, or the or the west, and you don't really see it everywhere all at once. Uh, so that would be quite interesting. By the time we reach the 30th through the 4th, it begins to become a lot more, uh, I guess, just realistic. We see warm conditions there for the Rockies and the upper Midwest. But cold for the central, the south central, the southeast, the northeast, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, even the west there, the west coast. Uh, but we do see some warmth come in, which makes it a little bit more realistic. It looks more like a very fluid uh, and common pattern that we would see. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look further into February now. So we're going to move on towards the 4th through the 9th of February, go all the way through towards the end of February. And then, again, we're going to take a look at one-month increments. That's going to show us all the way 
to where we're going to be able to see the entirety of March, April, uh, and then we're going to take a look at the European seasonal model as well and compare the two. Now, what's interesting by this point is we get kind of a pattern reset. You can tell there's not a lot of dominant features going on. We have a little bit more cold in the east than we do in the west because there is that warm pocket there set over the uh, four corner states, some of the regions to the west and north of those regions as well. But this is kind of like a pattern reset. This is going to allow for a new pattern to come in. And as we can see by the 10th through the 15th, uh, first off, I want to remind you that as we get further into this, the accuracy diminishes, obviously, but this is a good look at what the pattern could look like at this point. But this model is obviously going to start to get less and less accurate as we get towards the end. Could it be correct? Yes, but the chances of that goes down with time. We're looking at this for educational purposes, for entertainment purposes uh, moving forward, just to see if it'll be correct. And a lot of people, people are curious what this model is calling for. Here's the 10th through the 15th. We see cold enters the central and the eastern United States again. We see a little bit of a southwest ridge there, which is a positive PNA. By the time we reach the 15th through the 20th, it's a lot of the same here. We see cold in the central, cold in the east. So that looks like a cold February. Here's the 19th through the 24th, and it's a lot of the same once again. But it starts to average out, which means this is kind of an ensemble model here. So what ends up happening is it starts showing a lot of just weird patterns that aren't really realistic. As you can see, there's kind of cold just sprinkled on everywhere and just like little yellow patches. It won't look that way in reality. And I think this is just the accuracy really dropping off here at the end. So take this. The only dominant feature I can see here is kind of the cold in the central United States. Everything else I'm really skeptical about here. Uh, but still, will this model be accurate? That's a great question to be asking uh, at this point. Anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the one month increments. So we're going to get to see the rest of January, the entirety of February, March, and April. And then we're going to take a look at that European model. And we're even going to take a little bit of a look at the teleconnections at the very end of this video. So stay tuned. All right, now here we are taking a look at the rest of January according to the CFS monthly model, not the daily model this time. As you can see, it's calling for South Central and Southeastern United States to be colder than normal all the way up through the Mid-Atlantic. I highly agree. All the models are leaning towards this. Throughout the next 20 days, I think the pattern will, for the most part, look like this most of the time. With some warm in the West, warm in the North Central, and warm in the Northeast. With mainly just cold in the South Central and the Southeast there. As we head towards February, the interesting thing here is this model likes to just show cold in the the central and eastern United States in general, and then also the Pacific Northwest. And this looks a lot more like what my winter forecast looked like. Um, so generally, a colder February could be on the way with warm in the southwest there, positive PNA persisting according to this model. Let's move it towards March, and we could get an extension of the winter. Oftentimes, March can be a spring month or a winter month based on, I'm just saying, like based on how it feels. This would look, this would feel a lot more like an extension of winter. We'd have a very wintry March, but also if it's warmer than normal, you would have more of a spring like March and early beginning to that uh, spring. The one thing I do want to mention is this would also, I think, enhance chances of severe weather. So we're going to be watching for that closely. Obviously, as we move towards February, we're going to start working on our spring forecasts and stuff, looking forward towards the spring. Uh, I think this would be more severe weather. It would have feature above average severe weather. Here's April as well. Again, cold in the central and eastern United States. I also think this would enhance the chances of severe weather as well. So if this happens to be correct, I do think that we could have an above average severe weather season. So we will be watching for that closely. That was all of our months there. And I'm going to talk about why I don't like the European seasonal model. Uh, so let's just talk about that. Here was the January forecast, which is actually very good. The only time that the... the the European seasonal model is good as in the first month. So you'll see the newest uh, update come out a few days after the beginning of the given month. So I think, for instance, we saw this come out like on January 8th, maybe or something. This is very accurate for how January has gone and how I expect it to go. OK, but then you look at February and it's kind of just like bleh, like you're, you're not going to see this ha actually happen. Patterns like this don't really happen. Uh, we're going to see much, much more greater differentials from normal than this. And then here's March, and it just looks like kind of just like little blobs of just like slightly above normal. April, same thing. Uh, and then May, same thing. You can just tell it's not accurate at all. The only time it's accurate is the first month. So I just wanted to talk about that. A lot of people like the European seasonal model, and I don't necessarily know why at all. Because it just averages out after the first month. It's great for that first month. Terrible beyond that. 
Here's the teleconnections real quick. We expect to be in a negative AO, which is good for cold in the United States. Uh, we expect to be in a negative AO at least through the 25th, but especially before the 19th. So from now till the 19th. An, a an NAO, we expect to be negative pretty much through the whole model run as well through the 25th, uh, but at least through the 20th. Same story with the AO. And then the PNA looks to be positive until about the 19th, and then it goes negative, which would mean cold flips from the east to the west. We'll be watching for that pattern flip uh, for sure. But as you saw in the CFS, we do kind of get some cold in the west, but that quickly returns to the east. So that might be what occurs uh, this, you know, as well, like in reality. So anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys who will get the most snowfall with this south central snowstorm. And James Marr said, an isolated spot that gets a foot of snow in the northeast New Mexico is not out of the question. And I certainly agree in those mountainous regions of New Mexico. I think uh, 10 to 15 inches is likely. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Ben Benick, Justin Quantrell, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Balamo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Terry Curtis, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Alicia Davis, and Mark J. If you would like to be on our patron end screen, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.